Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace. Another day. Another day. Um, I thank the Lord for the day. Few trials and tribulations. Few trials and tribulations, but I'm up. Um, thank the Lord for everything and everyone. And I thank the Lord for my beautiful lady that's contributed to some of the things that I'm using now. You know, um, she's helped me a lot, you know, uh, with these things and so forth like that. I'm not really a tech person, so, you know, basically I'm trying this out, see how this is going to work. Um, but we'll see, you know, um, you know, you always got to, you know, try to improvise as much as you can. Always got to try to improvise. You know, uh, necessity is a mother of invention. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so here I am. Um, I try to diverse and be, um, you know, try to get you to understand what the Lord is talking about when he makes this verse right here, right? So when the Lord quotes this verse, um, let's go into Timothy once again. Let's go in the book of Timothy once again. Second Timothy, the second chapter, and uh, the 15th, 15th verse, he says, study to show thyself approved. That's what you got to do, man. You got to study. So what I'm going to show you tonight is some of the books that the Lord blessed me with down through time, you know, that's helped me with my studies. Okay. Without these books, without these records, it would really, really be hard, you know. So um, you need to get well-rounded if you want to really understand the Bible. So it says, study to show thyself approved unto the Lord, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Now he says, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you got to study, but you got to know what you're studying and you got to divide it properly, the word of truth. You have to know exactly what you're talking about and you got to put it together properly. Okay. So down through time, you know, it started with, with my elders and stuff, the school that I went to at uh, 1 West 125th Street, Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge, which was called ISUPK. The original address is 1 West and now we split apart. And there are many subset schools and so forth like that. So some of the books that I have that I'm going to show you guys is from way back then. Um, and it's all add to my library. And uh, so that's the first part um, that I'm going to do with you guys is uh, give you guys a visual of some of the books that I have. Right. That's part of my library. That is necessary. Necessary. So when you go to the book of Revelation 2, verse 9, let's look at that again. Revelation 2, verse 9. The Savior says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say that they are Jews. See that? And are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. So this is their conversion Right. So who am I talking about now? These people here is who he's talking about that say that they're the Jews. So they wrote this book called The Elder Protocols of Zion. OK, it's a major manifesto of the so-called white man and what he's doing from way back then to now. So I bought this book years ago. Me and my young lady fight about it. She says, uh, you know, that is her book. No, it's not my book. Okay. 
So this is one, okay? This is required reading for you to understand what is going on in the world today, right? You should get this book so that you can understand what is going on in the world today. And now that book leads into this book. Where'd it go? Wow, I just had the book. So the 13th tribe by Arthur J. Colster, when you're studying, this documents when they were converted in the 7th century from off the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. When they were converted, their kings was converted into believing and they passed it to their people. So the Caucasian man that you see now running around calls himself a Jew. That's why the Savior says, and I know that works in tribulation, right? And the blasphemy of them which say they're Jews and they're not. So the Savior is saying they're not the Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan, the church of Satan. So this tells you when they were converted and what happened, their conversion. Okay. Now, let's go to Revelation 2, verse 9. All right, that was Revelation 2. Let's go to Revelation 3, verse 9. So he says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So let me give you visuals on that. Let me give you visuals on that. Hold on a second. Okay, just a little problem. Right, so I'm going to bring out some books to show you guys how you must study. So this class may, topic may deviate a little bit more into studying and getting certain records for you to understand what the Bible is talking about, that you just cannot pick up the Bible just like that and read it through to get an understanding of it. Okay, you must be well grounded, well rounded. You must be well grounded. You must be well rounded. So Revelation 2 verse 9, Revelation 3 verse 9. This is their second conversion of the white man into believing that he's a Jew. The second conversion of the so-called white man into believing that he's a Jew. Right. Arthur J. Kostler breaks this down. But who is Christ talking about in Revelation 2 verse 9 and Revelation 3 verse 9 and saying that they are not the Jews? So here is a great book that I have that you can buy and order online. Now, I got this from Strand's Bookshop. As you see what it says, the world's great religions from Life magazine. This is from Life magazine, Life and Time. All right. Now, let's look at what. The Savior says, right? Let's go into one of the great religions, right? 
So right here, it says the law of Judaism. See, so the Savior said, Revelation 2, verse 9, number one, the concept of Judaism. Let's understand the word Judaism. The word Judaism is a plague of the man by the name of black man by the name of Judah. Judah is the king tribe of which Christ comes from. Okay, let's see that. So there was no concept called Judaism. Let's go into the book of Genesis. Let's see who Judah is. Genesis, the 49th chapter. Okay, there is no concept called Judaism. But what happened is a man by the name of Moses Mendelssohn, he put the ISM on there and based it off the laws of Moses in the Torah. Okay, and created a religion or a ism called Judaism. He created that, right? Nowhere in the Bible does the Lord speak about a concept called Judaism because Judah is a man. Now, if you go to Genesis, the 49th chapter, there is all the sons, right? But matter of fact, let me go to Exodus, right? Show you that there's no, let's go to Exodus. Let's look at that. Exodus, the first chapter. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Father Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Judah was a man. So nowhere in the Bible is there something called Judaism like they say. See, you got to study to show thyself approved. Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. See that? These are men, and from these men came the tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay? Breaking this down to you again. The name Israel is a king name and a priest name that was given to Jacob. Jacob's name means supplant, and Jacob's name was changed by the gift of the Lord through prophecy by the Lord that was, that was given to him by the angel. How do we know that? Let's go back into Genesis. Um, Genesis, the 32nd chapter. So where do you give, call yourself an Israelite from? Okay, Genesis, the 32nd chapter and the 24th verse. And Jacob was left alone. See, remember the name Jacob means the supplant. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And Jacob said, let, no, the angel, the angel said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. This is what Jacob is saying, right? And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob, or some people say, Yaquab. And he said, thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel. Okay. He said, you shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. Now, what does it mean? The name Israel, watch. Thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, see, the word Israel means you are a prince. Now, everybody doesn't have that title. Only this nation has thou power with the Lord and has prevailed. So now, what does it mean for you to be an Israelite? What, what was the purpose of the nation of Israel? Let's go to Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. What does it mean to be an Israelite? Exodus 19. Now, so we showed you how you got your title. Now he's going to show you your purpose that we were created for as a nation. Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. This is the Lord speaking to Moses to tell Israel. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenants, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Okay, that's where you get the word Jews or jewels from. Treasure is jewelry. So we were Jews or jewels to the Lord unto me. Above all people for all the earth is mine. So we as Israelites 
was supposed to be above. So now, these people are saying that they're the chosen people and that's how they're above us. See that? That's how they're above us. Okay, I'm going to give you more excerpts. Right? Listen to our purpose. And you shall be a kingdom of priests and a an holy nation. That's what we were created for. So when you go under the title Israelite, you're, the Israelite man is supposed to be a priest to the Lord. Okay? These are the words you shall speak unto the children of Israel. So now I've taken you back and now I'm showing you Staying in Exodus, the first chapter. Staying in Exodus, the first chapter. Now I'm going to show you that this man lied when he created a concept called Judaism. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. See that? So when Jacob's name was changed to Israel, all these sons now is his children. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and then Judah. See that? So Judah was a man. There was no religion called Judaism. So this concept right here that people ascribe to is a lie. See that? It is a lie. Now, let's go back to Genesis, the 49th chapter. And we're going to read the 10th verse. Now, also know this. Genesis, the 49th chapter is a breakdown of the tribes and where the tribes would be in the last days. Okay, this is how we know where the descendants of the tribes are now fulfilling prophecy. How do we know that? Genesis 49 and 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. See that? In the latter days. So he wasn't going to tell them about what was going to happen to them now. He's being given visions by the Lord as to what is going to happen to the sons, 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 the descendants in the last days. Right? So now let's look at Judah. The eighth verse, it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. So the brethren is all the rest of the tribes. They supposed to praise Judah because Judah is the black man of whom they are the daddy. He's the daddy of all tribes and people upon the earth. How do I know that? Scriptures. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 40. Isaiah Not Isaiah 40. Give me one second. Isaiah 48. How do I know? Because the scripture tells me so. Judah is the head of everything. From Judah, from the black man, came all the tribes because Father Abraham was a Judite. Shem was a Judite. That's the royal line. Noah was a Judite. Going all the way back to Adam, Adam was a Judite. Isaiah 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and I come forth of the waters of Judah. What is the waters? What is the water? Water is sperm. Sperm comes out in a liquid form. That's what they call seed. So he's saying you, all the tribes exist from Judah. And if you want to get deeper technically, if you know how to track it in the Bible, all nations of the world exist because of Judah. 
because of Noah. Okay, so here it is again. This is why he said, you shall bow to them. Hear ye this, O house of the J Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth of the waters of Judah. So the waters, what waters is he talking about? How does a house come forth, your, your sons, your lineage, through sperm, through sex? Okay, you, you don't magically just pop into existence. So now let's go back. Genesis 49, verse 8 again. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down to thee. So all the tribes are supposed to bow to Judah. Why? Because of Christ. So me coming from the islands, you understand, and knowing that I'm of, of the tribe of Benjamin, I bowed to the black man of Judah because I could not come to this country except for what he had already laid down fighting for civil rights, fighting to kick off Jim Crow, that I could be free to walk in this land. Okay. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down and couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter, the rulership, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Shiloh is Christ. And unto him, unto Christ, shall be the gathering of the people. See that? So I don't want to break this down anymore because it's going to lead into another topic, right? So I'm showing you by studying you. Now you have to study history. You have to go back into the past. Why in Revelation 2 and 9, he said these people are false. So I'm going to give you one more picture of them. Good. Look at them. They got converted. They got converted. So now, this is why you need this book, so you could know when they got converted. What time? Okay, so putting this book away. Revelation 2 and 9, Revelation 3 and 9, converts. There is no such thing as the law of Judaism. Okay? So these people are basically thieves. So every time you see them and you say, oh, those are the Jews, you're taking away your title, which is given to you for, by the Lord and saying that you are a Gentile and saying that they are better than you. Meanwhile, they are converts. 700 AD, they were converted into believing. So now this here also is another great book, right? It's got the world's great religions in here. Good. It also has something showing you all the false gods of one of the great religions of the world, which is called Hinduism. Look at it, man. Look at all the demons and the stuff that they believe in. Okay. That comes from, you know, the world's great religions. So these, you know, we could stay in this forever, breaking this down from the Bible. You know, just, just one book with pictures. Okay. So in the world's great religions, we're going to, you know, sometimes takes a lot of study, though. You know, when I was uh, in the spirit studying these things. I mean, if, if you really want to study, you know, the, the study is there. If you if a person really wants to study. But in here, they've got Hinduism, Buddhism, Catholicism. Uh, so many different, they've got, um, you know, Allah, 
you know, all these different concepts. So you must study. And these books help you to break down the lies so that you can see the truth that is of the Bible. That you can see the truth that is of the Bible. Why the Lord says that these things are lies. You can see all the different idols and so forth like that. That's why the Lord said this to show you. Let's go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Let's look at the Ten Commandments, right? And uh, see why you should study. So you need visuals once again, right? So I'm going to go to visuals. And the Lord spake all these words, saying, I'm the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt make no other gods before me. See that? So just from the first commandment alone, look at all the different gods. Look at all the different gods, man. So these are the Indian gods. Thou shalt make no other gods before me. But wait. Hold on. Let's go up into Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 40, verse 25. He says, to whom will you liken me? Or shall I be equal, say the Holy One. So the Indians in India liken him to this. They liken him to this. Wait. The Indians in India liken him to that. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 45. Now check this out. These nations set up many false gods. Okay. But if you go to Isaiah 45, verse 4, 5, and 6. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have called thee. See, the Lord called us. And I have surnamed thee, but thou hast not known me. See, we as Israelites, we never knew the Lord. Even though he called us, even though he called us, we never knew him. See, the Bible is clear. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is none else. So I'm just using the Indian beliefs. These are their main gods right here. The Indian main gods. Okay. So now you have right here, you have Brahma. That's one of the main gods. Okay. Then when you move from Brahma, you have Vishuni. And then when you move from Vishuni, right, all these are lower form demons and so forth. But the mains is Brahma and Vishuni, right? The Lord said, so well, who can you compare me to? Who can you compare me to? All these are false gods. So the Lord said, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no power besides me. I girded you, the meaning the Lord kept us. And thou hast not known me. 
that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west is that there is none besides me and I am the Lord. There is no other God. There is no other God. Even Christ acknowledges that. That he is not the father. Even Christ acknowledges that. You cannot lie and say that Christ said that he is God. Okay? Isaiah 45, verse 12, the Lord talking again. He says, I have made the earth and created man upon it. Nobody else. Okay? So these great religions, they're lying to you. So that's what this book is about. That's one. So I'm going to have to pick up the pace a little bit. Good. Another great book that I have here is The Coronation. Coronation of who? Of Hail Selassie. Now, the Ethiopians lied and said that King Solomon had sex with the Queen of Sheba. Okay. And when he had sex with the Queen of Sheba, that came the line of Melanic all the way down. And that this man, see the man sitting right there? This man is of the chosen line and he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Now, this stuff is in the Bible, okay? This stuff is in the Bible. But who are the Ethiopians? See, this is why you must study. For you to understand who the Ethiopians are, they are the Cushites in the Bible. So you must go back to Genesis, the 10th chapter. They are Gentiles. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And after them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth breaks down. Now, the sixth verse, and the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. The name Cush is the name for the Ethiopians. The word Ethiops came from the Greeks, which means burnt face, dark skin. So they called them that. But in the Bible, at certain points, they were referred to as Cushites. Then when the name change came, because the coming of the Greeks. So these are all Gentiles. These are all Gentiles. So they try to tie up um, with Christ, right? And then they try to use this verse. The Jamaicans try to use this verse, Revelation 19. See, you got to study the Bible. Now, matter of fact, let me go to Christ's lineage. Let me go to Christ's lineage. Let's show you that these people are false. They don't know what they're talking about. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's look at Christ's lineage, Matthew, the first chapter. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now watch this. Very important that you know the lineage of Christ because it ties up into David, into Solomon. But why is it if Solomon had sex with the Queen of Sheba, why doesn't the Lord not mention it? Okay. Generations. The genealogy to generate, genealogy, gene to generate of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. Now see, it goes into men. This man slept with a woman. The woman is not mentioned and produces a son. And the sons carry the lineage, okay? Watch. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Judas, or Judah and his brethren. And Judas begat Pharaohs and Zerah of Tamar. And Pharaohs begat Esau, and Esau begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab. So there were women there. But obviously they weren't important because it's the lineage of the seed. That's what they're tracking. 
And Aminadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Solomon, not Solomon. And Solomon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. Now, Ruth was very important. So the Lord put her in the genealogy, okay? And in the genealogy of Christ, right? She was a heathen that was on the outside. Let's pick it up. Now watch this. And Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been of the wife of Urias, okay? Which was... um. Right. So what happened was David got his man Uriah killed because he wanted to sleep. You know, he wanted to sleep with this woman. So he knew the law, the law of what? The law of adultery. So he knew the law of adultery. So he didn't want to commit adultery. So he knew he had to kill his own man. OK, so he got his man killed so he could take his wife. And it was legal according to the law. But what he didn't know, what David didn't know was the Lord was watching. And the Lord paid him back for that. But well, watch the story. And Jesse begat David the king. And David begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of you. Now watch who Solomon begat. And Solomon had many wives. He had over a thousand wives. But the, what was the most important one? And Solomon begat Robom. And Robom begat Abba. And Abba begat Asa. So, the story of the Queen of Sheba is in the Bible. Okay, in Kings or whatever. But if Solomon slept with her, right, she would be his wife. He wouldn't let her go back. Because he had many wives, he would have kept her there. And especially if she was having a child. Okay? So now Solomon begets Rawbaum. You see the lineage? And Rabbam begat Abba, and Abiah begat Asa. Asa begat Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begat Joram. So the whole lineage is going all the way down to Joseph. It doesn't say anything about no Melanic or no Ethiopians or Queen of Sheba. It doesn't say anything about that. So they lied again. But you have to study. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Bang. So there is the lineage going all the way back to Father Abraham, all the way to the Christ. That's called the royal lineage. So no Queen of Sheba, no Melanic. This is another lie. But you have to study this book to see when he was coronated, what happened, and why the Jamaicans lost their mind and said he's got to be the king of kings uh, Lord of Lords, and that everybody would bow to him. So now the Jamaicans now, they go and they take this verse right here, Revelation 13, Revelation 19, verse 13. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. See that? So now the Jamaicans, when they created the concept, the Jamaicans, not the Ethiopians, the Jamaicans created the concept of Rastafarianism. Okay? So let's go into the book. Let's see where the concept of Rasta, what does it mean? Right? So, so here is this picture. Right, he doesn't look anything like us. They have a different people, structure, lineage, physiology. Tafari, see, Rastafari. So you got to understand names when you start in the study. Tafari Makononen was born on July twenty third, eighteen ninety two, at Jasara Goro, in the hills of Arag. Makonon Waldi Michael, his father had recently been appointed Ras. See that? So Ras is a word just like you have the president of the United States or the emperor or the Caesar or king. Ras is the Ethiopian word for ruler. 
appointed Ras and governed this vast province of eastern Ethiopia from the ancient walled city of Ara. In 1905, the year before Ras Makanin's death, the young Tafari, see, Tafari is another title name, okay? So these were title names of Ethiopian rulers, received his first military title, Desmach. Following his father's footsteps, he was appointed Ras of Ara in 1910. Upon the succession of Empress Zawaduti in 1917, Ras Tafari, see, so a title became regent to the throne and in November 1930 was crowned Negus Nagras, Hail Selassie. See that? Now, those are title names. He never came, made up a concept called Rastafarianism. So now, why did he, why did these Jamaicans believe that he was the king of kings and lord of lords? Let's look at this. Here is all the European rulership coming to bow to him. See that? See, this is why you must study. Because it clears away the madness and the lies of the past that is present on our people's minds to this very day. Okay? Subsequently, between Tikumet 8th and 20th, which is October 18th and 30th, the foreign envoys who had been invited began to arrive at Addis Abba, each in his turn. Here are the names of the envoys. His Royal Highness, the Duke of Gloucester, envoy of His Royal Majesty, the King of England, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Udine. So these are white people coming to bow to this man. So these Jamaicans now think that this man is the king of kings and lord of lords. Prince Udine envoys the king of his majesty, the king of Italy. H.E.M. Gerard envoys his majesty, the king of the Belgians. H.E. Baron K.C. Bilt, envoy of the king of Sweden. H.E. John Kerr Hendrick, Marutas, uh, envoy of the Queen of the Netherlands. Isaburo Yoshida, envoy of the Emperor of Japan. Uh, Mohammed Takfui Nassim Pasha, envoy of the King of Egypt. Marshal Francis Espy, envoy of the French Republic. Mr. H.M. Jacob, envoy of the USA. Baron von Waltosen, envoy of the German Republic. Count P. Mexus, envoy of the Greek Republic. Mushtin Pasha, envoy of the Turkish Republic. Count Drzewski, envoy of the Polish Republic. So these are all people, white people as you see, that came to bow. But the thing is, this man is not the king of kings. Let's see when Christ comes, what's going to happen. Let's go back into Revelation, right? Revelation, the fifth chapter, right? Let's go to Revelation, the fifth chapter. See the lies, and if you must study Peter's, I mean Timothy, Revelation 5, verse 12 saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb, which is Christ, that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom. So right there, that shuts him out. He was never slain and rose from the grave. Look, I got a bunch of books here I didn't even get into. He was never slain and risen from the grave. Strength and honor and glory and blessing. Listen to this. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the sea, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, had I saying, blessing and honor and glory 
and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Number one, Hail Selassie never rose from the grave when he died. Hail Selassie never fought the devil. So how did he get that title? He starved his own people to death. Okay, I want to give you another verse concerning this, the lamb. So there's another verse where it says that every knee shall bow to Christ. Every knee shall bow. Let me get that right quick as I close out. So I only got through two books so far of my library. This is, you know, I got right here. I'm going to probably try to do something again tomorrow. But I, I, I want, I want you all to see that, that this man has... The Jamaicans lied to you, setting up your false religion that people believe in now. Okay. B-O-W, bow. Good. Okay, so let's go to Philippians 2, verse 10. Watch this, and I'm closing on this. Okay, let's go to Philippians 2, verse 10. Nobody bowed to this dude. Christ is coming back. This dude is never coming back. Philippians 2, verse 10. That in the name of Jesus, not the white Jesus, not this dude, not the Roman Catholic, uh, cancer-stricken cat. No, not that dude. You got to take that dude out of your mind. A lot of our people have not taken that dude out of their mind. That by the name of the Savior, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that the Savior is Lord to the Lord, to the glory of the Father. So I've got a small collection here of books. One, two, three, four. I won't be able to do it, I, I think. All right, I'll just point them out to you. Books that you need. Here is a um, a thesaurus. You got to study words. I got a couple of minutes. You got to study words, a thesaurus. Okay. This is my classic Webster's Dictionary. Right? Collegiate. Listen, I learned this from Malcolm X. You got to get your dictionary. Okay, you have to study words. This is the Elder Protocols of Zion. You got to study, man. You must open your mind. The Bible is the main source. All these books now feed me into the Bible. One of the greatest books that I ever bought new as a man thinking. One of the greatest books. James Allen, 
as a man thinking. Right here, great source. Harper's Bible Dictionary. Excellent book for you to buy. Excellent. Dead on point. Harper's Bible Dictionary. It's got pictures. It's got maps. It's got time breakdowns. Everything. I learned so much from out of this. Another great book for you to get. Must have. Hammond. World. Atlas of World History. You cannot study the Bible without this. Take it from me. If you're truly studying the Bible, if you do not have this, you're lost. This is Hebrewism of West Africa, showing you that the Israelites came to, to the shores of West Africa and we were sold in slavery. This book is 100 years old. I do not give this book to anybody. I've had this book over 30 years. Slavery. This slavery is showing you how we were enslaved and it matches the prophecies in the Bible. Okay? Throughout the Bible for the 12 tribes. I'm going to do a whole class and break down slavery. Okay? Another great book. A Mayan struggle, showing you that they are people and the hell that they had to go through under the white man. Great book, great book, with visuals, pictures, showing you their culture, um, their struggle. They brown just like you. Okay. And the last of the books that I brought out, Actually, I got two more, but the last of the book that I brought out. This here, the Atlas of the Bible and Christianity, dead on point. Pictures, complete, precise breakdowns of times, movement. Everything that you read in the Bible, they gave it to you visually. So with that, I want to say peace. Um... Study to show yourself approved, man. You know, I know it's not easy. You can always call me. You know, leave a like on there. You know, on the YouTube channel. You know, if you got any questions or whatever, you know. But um, your goal is to get into the kingdom. With that... I keep it moving. Hope you be well out there. I say peace.